Welcome back to the Vintage View Podcast. How are you been, retro gamers? Today we're doing an episode... Uh, I can't find where I put my notes. You've already forgotten the topic? Yeah, I can't find it. I gotta hunt for All it. All right, well... I believe this topic was going to be on game collecting and how we hunt them down. Does that sound familiar? Well, I'm hunting for my notes right now, so I guess I'll go in unprepared. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Clever gentleman. Yeah, I tried to be. That was way too much work for a stupid setup. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, I just figured out... Collect your thoughts and hunt your notes. I don't have any notes. I just wing it. You know I do. We try to make notes, and then we never get around to using them. We just talk oh, about... I've got tons of notes. Whatever pops in our head. Well, yeah, you do now. It's probably the first yeah. time. I so, apologize in advance. People. Yeah, well, you are an apology. I don't know where I'm going with that. That's stupid. Anyway. All right, Scott. When did you decide to start collecting video games instead of just enjoying them? Um, It's kind of a weird story because... Technically speaking, I don't try to go out and collect them or hunt for them. I just got to the point um, it was sometime within the last 20 years because in a previous episode, I talked about selling a copy of the Zelda collection from uh, GameCube and uh, Dragon Warrior 7 for the PS1 because I had some financial issues and then I was going to get them again later. And then shortly after I was going to get them again, I realized that the copies were about five, six times more than what I had gotten in trade. Um, because at that point, used Dragon Warrior 7 was going for what it would be brand new. And that was if I could find a copy. And then the Zelda collection was selling for like 65 bucks, which I wasn't willing to spend that much for a game that, well... I got for free with my GameCube. So shortly after that, I uh, I realized I'm just not going to sell any of the games or game systems that I have and just keep them because I'll eventually want to play them again. Um, because in the past, what I was doing is, you know, go to the game store, take five, six games and trade them in and come out of there with one to two games sometimes not even a full game. I'd have to sometimes pay out of my pocket to get it. So there was definitely a lot of diminishing returns. Um, when I was younger, I used to go to a, a bookstore. Well, it originated as a bookstore, but uh, eventually it was a used entertainment store because eventually they even started selling musical instruments. But that's kind of where I got my start with diminishing returns because they would give you half in trade of what they sell it for. So as a rule, they usually sold games for about 75% of the, of the price that it would be brand new unless there was a problem with it. So, you know, if you go in there with, you know, two $60 games, you're walking out of there with like $50 in trade credit or something. And it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's kind of where I got started with that. And there was just a point, it was early 2000s where I just figured, okay, you know what? I'm just not going to sell what I have unless the game sucks or, you know, doesn't work. And that's, I think that's really only happened like one or two times in the last 20 years. I even have some games that I don't care too terribly much for, but I kept them because I just didn't want to sell them. And, you know, have a net loss. How about you? Yeah, um, kind of like your story. You know, when I was younger, I would just buy the games to enjoy them. And I didn't necessarily consider it collecting. But it was definitely the one experience of selling off most of my collection and getting very little in return that Here's I decided... Here's $4. Exactly. Yep. 
And I just figured it was better to just keep things instead of selling them off. Um, and from there, again, I wasn't really collecting. I didn't see it as collecting. I was just preserving what I had. And, you know, it all kind of started, I guess, when I was younger. But it really clicked when I was getting what I felt like ripped off by the video game store. And then, you know, I just kind of, I decided that uh, at some point I needed to start collecting more. So actively collecting and going out and finding them. So a lot of the tactics that I used as a younger kid, you know, like the flea markets and stuff like that. But um, my collection really started to grow in probably about 2001, 2002. Because I was living in Michigan, and the PS2 came out. So every Meyer that I went to, not to name drop a store or anything, but they're on every corner in Michigan, um, they were almost giving away PlayStation games, the regular PlayStation games. And I was like, ooh, piece of candy. So I picked it up, took it home. It was either great or it was complete and utter garbage. Um, and I just like, okay, you know, they're cheap enough. Keep going. Keep doing that. Keep going. Keep doing that. But my problem back then was my hobbies were kind of split between three things of model car kits, uh, guitars, and video games. So I didn't really hardcore collect or go out hunting for them back then. I think that kind of came in after my friend had given me his Disc Read Air Xbox, and I got that all fixed. Reading online reviews for Xbox games kind of pushed me into, ooh, I need this game. So I would read things on, you know, review websites, and then I would go to ShameStop, or we have a place called Disc Replay, and Disc Replay almost all always had really good condition boxes with manuals and you know the games were i think either the same price as shame stop or a little bit cheaper so i preferred to go there I like and how you're calling it, shame it was yeah um unless they want to endorse me i'm not changing but yeah i always went to disc replay because they had the best deals and their stock was always easier to go through. But um, I think 2010 was really when things got hyper, hyper focused on collecting. Yeah. So I would go out to thrift stores multiple times, multiple times a week. And I would check Craigslist uh, in the, one of the previous episodes I had, you know, the Craigslist story of finding the Sega Saturn. Uh, so it wasn't always great, but, you know, sometimes you would find a good deal. Flea markets were still kind of in their growing phase. Uh, we have a couple indoor flea markets where they just put their stuff, the pr price it, and the flea market itself takes care of all the collecting of cash. So people would just put old video games in there and they would be like you know nintendo games a dollar a piece and then of course there were some people who were like "Ooh, this is an old nintendo game fifty dollars and put it in a glass case and it's like you can't do that because you don't know what that, that game's really worth and most of the time it was just you know like super mario brothers they're ubiquitous <laughs> um well what but good makes me think of the guy who brought the nintendo into uh pawn stars <laughs> like this is this is there's a couple of those yeah did you see the one on um oh god the the storage locker place the guy finds it and he's like this is one of the original nintendo ds's and i'm like what no i didn't see that but one. it's just yeah it, it's just people not knowing and that was fine but to try and overcharge for something that they didn't know about that was the problem but then Goodwill came in. The first game I found at Goodwill was Mappy. Is it Mappy Land or Mappy something on the NES? And it had like a stack of price tags. 
and I kept like peeling like an onion. And it's like three ninety nine, two ninety nine, one ninety nine, and I'm going, well, how much is this? So I took it, I took it up to the counter, and the lady looks at it and she's like, oh, these are ninety nine cents. I'm like, perfect. So I picked it up for ninety nine cents. But the best thing about Goodwill was every week they had a color that was fifty percent off their price tags, and then every first Saturday of every month they had a fifty percent off everything sale so no matter what it was in the store whether it was you know a porcelain pot or a pair of jeans or you know a nintendo ds or what it was 50 percent off on that particular day and i was like dude these are great but it was always pretty much asses to elbows so you would always find people in there just packed and it was difficult to walk around and get around people and just dealing with people so i didn't go to them too often but they were still definitely a great way to hunt video games now there's salvation army stores as well but they're a little bit uh let's say uh different in the terms of you know they they just take whatever they've got and they put it out you know um they used to have what they called bric-a-brac, which was kind of just anything and everything that was on top of the clothes racks. So the clothes racks would have like a wooden board and they would just candles and and this and that. And I found so many video games in the little bric-a-brac areas I that it was absolutely insane. The, it, at the one at the Salvation Armies where I went to, they were usually, um, uh, it was basically a basket with crap in it. Okay, yeah. Ours, they had like for a second because I just looked up Mappy Land, <laughs> and there was one that was nine hundred dollars. Oh yeah, that's was, that's was graded. Looks like you're looking at yeah, a that fifteen to twenty five dollar game you paid a buck for. It's not bad. Really, interesting. Yeah, I'm earning earning on my investment. But the Salvation Army stores, uh, there were like two or three of them, and in one of them. I really got to know the the guy who worked there. I think I talked about this previously. Um, all the Nintendo controllers that he gave me really cheap. And, and sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes he would hold stuff back. It's really nice. um, and then there was issues one again. manager who saw me again. Yeah, you had... I'm asleep, no sound, just static for a while. Oh, great. So this is two episodes in a row. Where did I leave off? Fun. Well, you were talking about knowing a guy in the Salvation Army, and all of a sudden... Okay, yeah. So I got to know him, and um, I think I talked about him in a previous episode, uh, all the NES controllers and whatnot. Um, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes he would hold stuff back for me or say, you know, this is something that came in. Are you interested? And, you know, he was he was fairly good about that kind of stuff. There was another Salvation Army store that I went to a lot, and that was kind of the main one that I went to because they had a ton of video games in the bric-a-brac, more so than any other Salvation Army store. And I didn't really know anybody that worked at that store, but they saw me in there almost all the time. And this is where going in and going in often paid off because one day they had a huge collection of NES games. Somebody had either just dumped their NES controller or NES collection or somebody had probably passed away. These were in really good condition. Most of them had their manuals. None of them had their boxes boxes but they all at least had the little sleeves and i was going through and i'm like okay don't know what ghoul school is but i'll i'll pick it up don't know if toki is i'll i'll pick that up uh ooh, chippendale rescue rangers 2 with the manual and they had i think it was like ten dollar price tags on every game and while of course that would be a great deal for those games I was like, I'm used to paying 45 cents or 69 cents or something like that 
So I go to the manager and I'm like, hey, I don't mean to be an a-hole here, but I'm always in here. I'm looking this stuff, you know, looking for this stuff. Yep. Can you do me a solid? And he said, okay, if you buy 10 or more, I'll do them for a dollar a piece. And I was like, I can definitely put 10 games together. So I put 10 games together and I ended up getting a lot of really good NES games with their manuals. I think definitely one of them was like Castlevania, uh, Chippendales 2, um, uh, like Ninja Gaiden 3. There were, you know, a lot of really good games. So he did me a, a really big solid by, you know, a dollar a piece if I bought 10 or more. So that was really good. That was kind of cool. Now there's another Salvation Army manager who he, depending on how you look at it, he's he's either pretty cool or kind of an a-hole. But I had gone to the Salvation Army store I had never gone to before. And they had these like little bins where they kept the DVDs. Inside there, I found a copy of F Zero for the GameCube. And I take it up there, I put it down, and I reach into my wallet, pull out my debit card, and the dude looks at it and he's like, Is that debit? And I'm like, Yeah. He said, No, no, that's going to mess up my numbers. Take it. And I'm like, What? He's like, I'm the manager. Don't. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you, if I use your credit card or run your credit card, it's going to screw up my numbers. So you just, it's more that you, or it's better off that you take it. And I'm like, feeling how a little bit that, uncomfortable. How does that even work? I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know what he meant by it, but that's what he was telling me. So I'm thinking, okay, I, I guess that's what I'll do. But then things backfired because there was another Salvation Army store. I know we had like four or five of them. And they had a Super Nintendo that they wanted like $30 for. And kind of like Goodwill, they also had the weekly color price tags. And I asked my friend from the one store, I said, when is, you know, whatever color going to be on, on sale for 50% off? He looked at the little guide and he said, well, I think it's going to be next week. So next week I go in, I grab the Super Nintendo and I'm looking and I'm like, it doesn't say that this color is 50% off this week. I, I, I might be in trouble. So I tried it and I asked him, I said, what color is 50% off this week? And he looked at me and he goes, don't know. And I'm like, you don't know. Oh, wow. what? And he, so this is the same guy who gave me the F zero and he's like, all right. So he pulls out the chart and he says some other color than what is on the super Nintendo. And I'm like, Oh, well I, now I'm sitting there holding the super Nintendo. that says 35 bucks on it or something. And I'm trying to get it 50% off and I'm just going, Oh, this isn't working. And he looks at me and he goes, did you hide that? And I'm like, no, it was in like, they had a little electronics room. I said, no, it's just been in there since last week. He's like, I ain't seen it. I'm like, just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean that I hit it. I, you know, I don't know whether he had a bad day or maybe they told him that they were docking his pay or something. I don't know. But he wasn't very happy that I was trying to get a Super Nintendo for 50% off. And I don't even know whether that was the correct week or not. But I tried it, and I failed. And then the real honey hole is the Goodwill Outlet Store. Oh, yeah. That place, more often than not, I would walk in and find at least something. The Good, um, Goodwill Outlet Store in Tucson sucked. It never really had anything good. Really? Yeah, because they did put all the electronics in one in one area of the store, and the mm -hmm. rest of the store was just the other crap. But 99% of the time, the five or six times that I went with my mom, the electronics section that they had with the, with the electronics pins was mostly appliances and speakers. Mm, yeah. 
Well, I think we gave away the biggest score from the outlet store in a previous episode. Um, so, do it but again. I can definitely say that. Yeah, well, probably. But I found like an NES trackpad, which again in that episode I was explaining how they bundled up cables and cords and things. So or how they, they were them? going to change out. Say what? You mean how they don't bundle them? They just toss it in. Well, no, they actually, it, it turns into like a tumbleweed of cables. I mean, it literally does. And uh, you have to untangle <laughs> stuff if you really want it. It's terrible. So I was trying to untangle this, you know, the NES pad. And they were about ready to grab that bin to take it back to fill it up. And I'm like, no, I've got to get this. No, I've got to get this. And I was trying so hard to just get it out. And I decided... Hold on. I'll get a cart. I'll throw the whole bundle into the cart and I'll do this on my own time. So that's what I ended up doing. Just threw everything else back once I was done. Um yeah, many NES controllers over the 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 many years that I went there. Um I not too many N sixty four games for whatever reason, but there were a couple boxed copies of NES games. I think that's definitely nice. where I picked up my boxed Crystalis. Um, I think I picked up Zelda 2 Complete in Box. Um, one time, there was a whole stack of soup, not Super Nintendo, N64 game manuals. So I've got a whole bunch of N64 game manuals that I don't have the games for. Um... Oh, I found an Atari 400 once. Um, many, many, many of the the Famicoms, the Super Joys, like I was saying in one episode, one of them was crushed, and I've got the guts for it. I found Sega Master System controllers. Um, I found another Sega Saturn. There were many times I saw people with stuff that I wanted, but they already had it. There were a couple of times that people tried to help me out, but they didn't understand what I was doing. They thought that I was going through and picking up stuff to put in like a flea market, like most of the people who went to the outlet store were Sounds were doing. Right. And this one lady handed me a whole stack of sports titles for the uh, Xbox 360. And I'm like, oh, thanks. And I started looking at them, and I'm going, ugh. So I put them down, and hey, later on, she comes back it. to me. Well, some of them are, are kind of rare, but not these. These were junk. Man, so man. she comes back to me later with the whole stack. And she's like, you didn't want these? I'm like, no, I don't really collect those. And she just looked at me like, what's that mean? So while she was trying to be helpful, and I appreciate that, it was still something that I'm kind of like, I'm trying to find stuff that I enjoy. Not stuff that's just, you know, kind of flea market filler. But yeah, there was definitely the uh, Nintendo Top Loader. Um, that's, you know, the crown jewel of going and finding anything. Dude, you, when the you told me one... how much you paid for that, that just blew my mind. Well, obviously, it blew mine as well. So I mean, you paid what, um, less than two bucks for the whole thing? I think that's what yeah. you, you sent me the picture of the receipt. And I was like, dude. So. Yeah, so I think it it I, I I trying to remember. I know it at least had one dog bone controller, maybe two. Well, you but said you found it, the controller yeah, separate from the that. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was one controller that was plugged into it oh, because okay. so that's maybe, it was kind of, of while I was yeah I was kind of pulling it out from underneath the the painting, and um, yeah, the whole mess of wires. But I can't remember what else. I mean, there's so much stuff that I did find there. Um, okay. Well, if you can't think of anything else, why don't we try to shift gears and actually talk about things that we would love to find at, at oh, decent boy. prices. But I did, I did want to mention that... one quick thing before we do that, actually. Because talking about um, you know, Goodwill and all these other things, it was making me think, there was one thrift store in tucson arizona that i enjoyed going to because everything was i don't think they really even bothered seeing what the what the prices were and price accordingly because 
it seemed like anything video game related was like at a set price. Like consoles were like fifteen bucks, twenty bucks. Um, games, regardless of what game it is, those were like two to three dollars each. And that was the disabled American veterans thrift store. When that one disappeared, yes. it was kind of sad. I don't know. I don't know if the price was the same at yours, but that's how it was at mine. Yeah, we definitely had one of those. And yeah, they didn't seem to care about as long as they were selling stuff. That's all they really cared about. So that's always good because it's good when you find those kinds of thrift stores when they. It's not that they don't know what they have, but they don't care. They're just they're literally there for a specific reason. Whereas I think Goodwill or Salvation Army, let's let's face it, they are they're there to make profit. True, yeah. But uh, so what what items would you love to find in the wild? Well, I mean, to be honest, I can't. I mean, I was going to say that my list on that was extremely long. But now that I'm trying to think about it, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I've got. I've got the the top loader, and I've got you know my boxed copy of Crystalis. Um, I don't know. Realistically, I'm not sure there's much for the Game Boy. <laughs> well, you ought to send that to me so I can complete my collection. Nope. Um, not not giving it up. You have to fight fine. for it. You're gonna Rick Astley it. Yep. All right. I'm never gonna. No, I'm not gonna fight you over it. Never gonna let you down or let it down. Anyway, you know, obviously a top loader is up to the top of my list. I mean, I could definitely go online and buy one for one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars, or whatever they're going for now. But another mm-hmm. one that that I would love to find, which one of these days I may just go online, eBay or something, and pay twenty bucks for another copy. But the AscuWare Fighter Pad. That was my absolute favorite controller because it had the L and R buttons at the, you know, up and the shoulders, but they also had the, the layout. So it actually had six buttons. So they had the L and R down on where you hit it with your thumb. And to me, that was so comfortable. I know it's meant for fighter games, which it actually worked pretty good for, for uh, fighting games, but it just, it felt more comfortable than a regular, uh, a regular controller. And it even had turbo, but I never really used the turbo or the slow motion or anything. Um, really, those are the only ones I can think of off the, off the top of my head that are, I guess, uh, my white whales. Obviously, there are some more modern games that are that are kind of towards the top of my list. But uh, some of them are kind of impossible. For example, uh, I would love to get a copy of of uh, Dragon Warrior, well, Dragon Quest uh, 10 in English, but it doesn't really exist. Well, fan translations, we talked about that last week. But mm-hmm. there's there's just, there's not a lot of things that I can think of off the top of my head that I really want uh, that, I, I mean, I couldn't get elsewhere, but uh, obviously there's quite a few things that, that I know for a fact that if I saw in the wild, I'd pick up. I just can't think of them off the top of my head right now because uh, those are really the, the, the two biggest items that I wanted. And of course, one of them's not very expensive. It's just not exactly the easiest to, to find. Although now that I look for it, I'm seeing a whole bunch of copies on on eBay from thirteen dollars all the way up to twenty five bucks. So I guess maybe it's not as hard to find these days than it was what twenty years ago when I when I decided to look for another. So I don't know. That's kind of that's all I've been looking for and trying to figure it out. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think one controller that I've been trying to find for a long time is the Super Nintendo Advantage. Um, because I've got the, the Nintendo Advantage, and I loved that. But I've never had the one for the Super Nintendo. And I've always one. wanted one of those. 
Yeah. Um, it, it looks really cool. But the one thing is, I, I would always find it at, like, disc replay. And, oh, you know, oh, they're obviously, yeah. Now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> they look really cool, don't they? Yeah. For whatever reason, they went with the Super Nintendo motif, but the Super Famicom button design. Yeah, that is kind of strange. I'll, to be honest with you, I do like it, the Super Famicom buttons better because I do too. Yeah, you know, it's funny you get like purple and everything on the on the console, but then mm -hmm. the buttons are just the. You know, the fact that the joysticks, or the joysticks, the controllers actually have a lot of different colors. That's actually kind of nice. And we're getting under tangent. So, dear yeah, listeners. Yeah, but like, leave us a, a lot of those. About, oh, yeah, sorry. Well, I was going to say that, you know, a lot of those could be found at a place like Disc Replay. Uh, yep. They would have those, but they were, you know, top retail. So that's kind of like, eh, do I want to pay that or do I want to continue hoping to find one out in the wild. Exactly. That's how I feel about some of the other things. So, yep. dear listeners, as I was saying when, when Sam interrupted me. Rudely interrupted. Apparently. Uh, what's, what are your white whales? What, do you, what would you love to see out in the wild? These days, you can literally get any game you want online if you're willing to pay the price. But what would you like to see if you were out going to a thrift store, flea market, antique store that's weird the antique stores are yeah you know, video game places these days but uh what do you what would you want, want to find go ahead and leave us a message down in the comments and we'll we'll go ahead and uh read them so was there anything else on your list that uh you had to talk about um i could end on a funny anecdote from disc replay because well, I've disc probably replay, heard these stories, so let's go ahead and go with them because those are kind of fun. I'm not sure if you have heard this one. Oh, really? Um, basically, okay. disc replay, uh, as we've discussed, they sold you know media, uh, all kinds of video games, retro all the way up to modern. And one disc replay had a little section where they would put out the manuals. I'm not sure why they didn't include them with the games when they sold them, mm -hmm. but. but they had little manuals out there for anything, you know, whatever game they just sold the, the, um, the cartridge and gave away the actual manual. And it had a little sign said free. So I go up because I'm familiar with this store and that they're giving this stuff away for free. And I see resident evil two for the N64. It's just the manual. So I pick it up. I'm like, Oh, okay. And I start walking away with it. And I can hear from behind me, this lady goes, oh, my God, did he just steal that? And one of the people from behind the counter goes, no, ma'am, we give those things away for free. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. But I also have that, like, as a child, I had this stupid idea that if I ever owned a store, I would go through and test the employees where I would walk around like, you know, if it was a grocery store, I would eat stuff in the store and see who said something. And if they said something, I would give them a promotion because it means that they're paying attention and, you know, doing their job. But if I owned, you know, a store like Disc Replay and I were to walk out with something and they didn't say something, I would be extremely disappointed. That makes sense. You know, kind of with that story, it kind of makes me think of something from uh, that used bookstore I was telling you about, Bookman's. Mm -hmm. And they used to they used to have a, a basket on the desk of the electronics counter that had a stack and stack and stacks of, of manuals and a little thing that says free on there. And somewhere along the lines... Because uh, I've known a few employees there. I've had some friends. One of which, however, fun fact, he worked at the electronics counter and has your same birthday. Anyway, unfortunately, he passed, he passed about eight years ago from a diabetic coma. 
three days before oh. his birthday. That part sucked. Anyway, that's beside the point. Well, thanks for bringing us down. Yeah, well, it happens. But one thing is, is he actually was telling me that they realized because of collectors that there's a market for those. So they actually kept them behind the counter until they had the game. And then they would actually package it with the game and then bump the price of the game up by 5 or $10 at least, oh. uh, depending on the game, just so they'd sell it more. So, yeah. Well, I, I, I guess that does make sense. You know, I mean, they have the manual, and if they made it with the game, you know, collectors, oh, yeah. I believe we would rather pay more for something that comes with a manual. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense, but for a while, everything was free. Yeah. They had an empty, if they got an empty game box and trade, or if they had manuals that didn't have a game with it, they would just give those out for free. Um, but whenever they sold the game, if they had the manual, they would go ahead and just package it together and put it in the, in the case. But, um, somewhere along the lines, if they didn't have the game for it, they would just put the manuals behind the counter and just keep them there until they found the game and then put it together as a package. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 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 that was my story about manuals, but, um, yeah, it was kind of cool. I kind of miss that store. It's not the same as it was. The prices are pretty high now, and I actually have seen games that were uh, fairly new. I'm talking like out in the in the last year that they're selling for more than GameStop does, brand new. Ooh, it's like they don't update the prices whenever the prices drop in the stores. So they may have something on the shelf for six months at the original price they put it out, which would be you know five or ten dollars less than brand new but then the the price drops on that game and they're still selling it for that that pr that same price whereas the uh uh the gamestop price is sometimes five ten even twenty dollars less that part kind of sucks but when your business grows and you have enough people bringing things in and it's kind of hard to go through and update all the prices on everything real time like that. Mm -hmm. I was actually telling them maybe they should put a barcode with the, with the name of the game and the console and just put a scanner there. And then that way they can update the price once in the system and it'll just tell you what the price is. But they said that would be too much overhead, mm. but you never know. Yeah. You never know. Because that way you could, they would be able to update the price and have it accurate each time. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we have anything else to talk about. We've been uh, yapping for 38 minutes. I believe all my stories are done. I don't really have any real stories because these days I'm not really going anywhere because where I'm located right now, there's... Two thrift stores in town, Goodwill and a Salvation Army, and the only time I've actually I haven't found anything good in that in the Goodwill, which is right next to my house. The Salvation Army, the only time I found something was an unopened Lego set for I think it was five bucks when that Lego set when it came out was thirty five bucks. So I got myself an unopened Lego set for what? A seventh of the price that would have been brand new. So, oh, don't ask me to do the math. <laughs> well, five times times seven is uh, thirty-five. So that's how I did the math. But anyway, I don't think I've ever seen any video games in there. Mm. Kind of sucks, but there is a there is a used game store here. There's one GameStop, and then there's two stores that are called Game Crazy, or not Game Crazy. I was thinking of Hollywood Video that had Game Crazy. I like that place. No, the place here is called Game Nut, and it's uh, the one downtown has video games and comics and board games, and the one fairly close to my house is uh, video games, role-playing game stuff, and board games. And the, the retro game stuff that they have to me, 
I feel it's overpriced. I've sent you pictures of some of the consoles and stuff they have in there, and it's like, no. Hmm. Not worth not worth uh, $130 or something for a Nintendo 64 without the box or anything. Right, At yeah. Least, not to me, anyway. So, that's just my opinion, though. Other people may may hear that me mention that price and be like, that's a very good price. I'm going to go there and buy it. That's up to you. True. I'm just cheap, and, well, I'd rather get a good deal on something than pay roughly the same price as anyone else at any other store anywhere else in the country. So, that's kind of where we're at. So we've got no more yep. stories. What are your? I know I've already asked for what your white whale is, but what are your? Uh, what are your favorite collecting or or hunting stories? Go ahead and tell us in the comments, and uh, we'll get to them. Well, I guess this is it. So uh, I guess I will talk to you guys next week. Go ahead and visit our socials. We'll go down there, and uh, we'll go down there. What am I trying to say? Go down in the com Not in sure. the description and go to our socials and interact with us. We're pretty lonely. We don't have anyone to talk to except ourselves. Nobody likes us. Anyway, I guess this is uh, me signing out. Me too. And then Fifi will will say something later. I'm kidding. Yeah, something like that. Your cat won't say anything. Anyway, people. Yeah. Toodaloo. Bye-bye.